Welcome to the Wu English Channel, where we learn English through captivating stories. Join us on this journey, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting tales. Chapter One: The Early Years. In the lush green countryside of Hyde Park, New York, a young boy named Franklin Delano Roosevelt began his journey. Born on January 30th, 1882. Into a world of privilege and tradition, Franklin was the only child of James and Sarah Roosevelt. His parents, belonging to the upper class, ensured Franklin had a life filled with comfort and education. Franklin's early years were ones of exploration and learning. The vast estate of his family provided him with endless opportunities to discover the wonders of nature. He would often be seen wandering the fields. His curious eyes observing the dance of the butterflies and the sway of the tall grasses in the wind. His love for the outdoors was evident from these early days. Education was a priority in the Roosevelt household. Sarah, his mother, was a strong influence in Franklin's life. She taught him the value of knowledge, and the importance of being well read. Franklin was a bright child. Showing a keen interest in history and biology, his parents hired the best tutors to ensure he received a well-rounded education. The young Roosevelt was particularly fascinated by the stories of great leaders and explorers, dreaming of one day making his mark on the world. Despite being an only child, Franklin was not lonely. He had a close relationship with his parents, especially his mother. Who was protective yet encouraging of his adventurous spirit? His father, James, a man of business and philanthropy, set an example of responsibility and service to the community, values that Franklin would carry throughout his life. The Roosevelts were a family of tradition, often hosting grand events at their estate. These occasions were a spectacle of elegance, with guests from the highest echelons of society. Franklin, although young, was taught to mingle with the adults, listening to their conversations about politics, business, and society. This exposure gave him an early insight into the world of leadership and decision making. As Franklin grew older, his interest in the world expanded. He developed a fascination with sailing and the sea, often spending hours by the Hudson River watching the ships sail by. He imagined himself as a captain, navigating through uncharted waters. This dream was a reflection of his desire for adventure and exploration, a trait that would define much of his later life. Franklin's education took a more formal turn when he was sent to Groton School, a prestigious preparatory school in Massachusetts. It was here that he began to shape his identity, independent of his family's influence. At Groton, Franklin encountered a diverse range of ideas and beliefs, challenging him to think critically and develop his own viewpoints. Life at Groton was not just about academics. Franklin engaged in various sports and activities, showcasing his leadership and teamwork skills. He was not the strongest athlete, but his determination and spirit made him a respected member of his teams. The young Roosevelt also showed an early talent for public speaking. He was an active member of the school's debate team, honing his skills in argumentation and persuasion. These experiences were crucial in developing the eloquence and confidence he would later be known for. As his time at Groton came to an end, Franklin had grown from a curious child into a young man with a clear vision for his future. He was ready for the next chapter of his life, filled with ambitions and dreams. His experiences had instilled in him a deep sense of responsibility, and a desire to make a positive impact on the world. Franklin's journey continued at Harvard University, where he would further develop his intellect and character. But the foundations laid during his early years in Hyde Park. Were the building blocks of the great leader he was to become.
These years shaped Franklin Delano Roosevelt, preparing him for the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. In these formative years, the young boy from Hyde Park learned about life, nature, and the importance of knowledge. He understood the value of tradition, yet was always looking towards the future. His early education, both formal and through the experiences at his family's estate, set him on a path to greatness, a path that would one day lead him to become one of the most influential figures in American history. Chapter 2. Harvard and Love Franklin Delano Roosevelt stepped into the esteemed halls of Harvard University in 1900, embarking on a new chapter of his life. Harvard, a place teeming with intellect and ambition, was a perfect match for Franklin's curious mind and aspirations. It was here, amidst the historic buildings and vibrant intellectual atmosphere, that Franklin would further shape his identity and meet the love of his life, Eleanor Roosevelt. The young Roosevelt's time at Harvard was marked by a balance of academic rigor and social engagement. He pursued his studies with the same zeal he had shown in his early education, diving into a range of subjects from history to economics. Franklin's interest in government and leadership found a fertile ground at Harvard, where he was exposed to diverse political and social ideas. His academic pursuits were not just about gaining knowledge, they were about preparing himself for a future in public service. But Franklin's life at Harvard was not all about books and lectures. He was an active participant in the social scene of the university. Joining the Alpha Delta Phi fraternity, he immersed himself in the social activities that came with it. These experiences were crucial for Franklin, providing him with valuable lessons in building relationships and understanding different perspectives. It was also at Harvard where Franklin's path crossed with Eleanor Roosevelt, his distant cousin, and the niece of President Theodore Roosevelt. Eleanor, a shy but intelligent and compassionate young woman, captured Franklin's heart. Their courtship began slowly, as Franklin was initially more engrossed in his university life. However, as they spent more time together, their bond grew stronger. Eleanor and Franklin were a contrast in personalities. While Franklin was outgoing and confident, Eleanor was reserved and thoughtful. Yet they found common ground in their shared values and aspirations. They both cared deeply about social issues and the welfare of others. Their conversations were filled with discussions about their hopes for the future and how they could contribute to making the world a better place. As Franklin progressed through his years at Harvard, his relationship with Eleanor became more serious. He saw in her not just a partner for life, but a companion in his aspirations. Eleanor's quiet strength and moral compass were qualities that Franklin admired and respected. She provided him with a sense of balance and perspective, qualities that would be invaluable in his future endeavors. Apart from academics and romance, Franklin also explored other interests during his time at Harvard. He became involved in the Harvard Crimson, the university newspaper, honing his writing and editing skills. This experience not only improved his communication abilities, but also gave him insights into the power of media in shaping public opinion. As Franklin's final year at Harvard approached, he had to make decisions about his future. His experiences at the university had broadened his horizons and sharpened his aspirations. He graduated from Harvard in 1903, a young man ready to step into the world with confidence and a clear vision. His relationship with Eleanor had grown into a deep, meaningful partnership. In 1903, the same year he graduated, Franklin proposed to Eleanor. Their engagement was not just a promise of a shared life together, but also a commitment to their shared ideals and future goals. The time at Harvard was a transformative period for Franklin. It was a time of growth, learning and love. 
The lessons he learned, both inside and outside the classroom, were instrumental in shaping the leader he would become. His relationship with Eleanor, built on mutual respect and shared values, would be a cornerstone in his life. As Franklin stepped out of the gates of Harvard, he carried with him the knowledge, experiences and relationships that would guide him through the many challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. Harvard was not just an educational institution for him. It was a launching pad for his journey into public service and leadership, a journey that he would not walk alone but alongside Eleanor, his partner in life and aspirations. Chapter 3. Entering Politics After his time at Harvard and his marriage to Eleanor, Franklin Delano Roosevelt embarked on a new journey, one that would lead him into the world of politics. This chapter of his life began in 1910, a pivotal year when Franklin decided to run for the New York State Senate. It was a bold move for a young man of his age, but Franklin was driven by a deep passion for public service and a desire to make a positive impact on society. Franklin's entry into politics was not a mere coincidence or a sudden whim. It was a decision deeply rooted in his belief in the power of government to bring about change and improve people's lives. Growing up in a family with a history of public service, Franklin had always been exposed to discussions about politics and leadership. His time at Harvard had further shaped his political views, giving him a broader perspective on the issues facing the country. As a candidate for the state senate, Franklin faced numerous challenges. He was a Democrat in a district that had been dominated by the Republican Party for years. Many saw his candidacy as a long shot. But Franklin was undeterred. He embarked on a vigorous campaign, travelling across the district to meet voters and understand their concerns. Franklin's campaign was a breath of fresh air in the political landscape of the time. He brought a new energy and a progressive vision that appealed to many, especially the younger voters. His speeches were not just about political promises. They were about hope, reform, and a better future for all. Franklin's charisma and ability to connect with people were evident. He listened attentively to the farmers, workers, and businessmen, discussing issues like labour rights, economic development, and social welfare. The 1910 election was a turning point. Against the odds, Franklin won, becoming one of the youngest state senators in New York's history. His victory was not just a personal achievement. It was a sign of the changing political tides, a shift towards more progressive and inclusive policies. Franklin's tenure as a state senator was marked by his commitment to reform. He was a strong advocate for social justice and worked tirelessly to address the issues of poverty and inequality. He championed laws that improved labour conditions and supported initiatives that promoted agricultural and economic development. One of the key moments during his time as a state senator was his stand against the powerful Tammany Hall, a political machine that had a significant influence in New York politics. Franklin's willingness to challenge Tammany Hall's dominance showed his dedication to principle over politics, earning him respect even from his opponents. In 1913, Franklin's political career took a significant turn when he was appointed as Assistant Secretary of the Navy by President Woodrow Wilson. This new role was a testament to his rising stature in national politics. It was also a position that resonated with him personally, given his lifelong love for the sea and naval history. As Assistant Secretary, Franklin played a crucial role in preparing the United States Navy for World War I. He was instrumental in expanding the Navy's capabilities, focusing on modernization and readiness. His time in this position was not without challenges, but Franklin's leadership and vision helped strengthen the Navy during a critical period in history. Franklin's experience in the Navy Department also provided him with valuable insights into international affairs and the complexities of global politics. 
It was during this time that he began to develop a deeper understanding of the importance of international cooperation and the United States' role on the world stage. Throughout his early political career, Eleanor played a significant role as his partner and confidant. She was not only a supportive wife, but also an intelligent advisor who shared Franklin's passion for social issues. Together, they formed a formidable team committed to public service and the betterment of society. By the end of this chapter in his life, Franklin had established himself as a prominent figure in American politics. His journey from a state senator to a national leader was not just a story of political ambition. It was a reflection of his unwavering commitment to serve and make a difference in the lives of the American people. Franklin's entry into politics laid the foundation for his future achievements. It was a time of growth, challenges and triumphs. His experiences as a state senator and assistant secretary of the Navy shaped his political philosophy and leadership style. This period also reinforced his belief in the power of government as a force for good, a belief that would guide him as he rose to become one of the most influential presidents in American history. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's early political career was a testament to his dedication, resilience and vision, qualities that would define his legacy in the years to come. Chapter 4 The Call of the Sea In the midst of his rising career in politics, Franklin Delano Roosevelt found a sanctuary in the vast expanse of the sea. Sailing was not just a hobby for Franklin. It was a passion that provided him with peace and a sense of freedom, a stark contrast to the demands of his political life. Franklin's love for sailing began in his childhood, during the days spent on the Hudson River. As he grew older, this love only intensified. The sea was a place where he could escape the pressures of public life, where the only sounds were the wind in the sails and the waves against the hull. On the water, Franklin felt a sense of serenity and clarity that was hard to find elsewhere. Sailing was more than a physical activity for Franklin. It was a source of mental and emotional rejuvenation. It allowed him to reflect on his life and work, to think deeply about the decisions he faced. The rhythmic movement of the boat, the challenge of navigating, and the vastness of the ocean provided a unique perspective that grounded him. Franklin often took to the sea with family and friends, sharing his love for sailing with those closest to him. These voyages were times of joy and bonding. Eleanor, although not as passionate about sailing as Franklin, appreciated the happiness it brought him. She saw how the sea rejuvenated her husband, giving him the strength to face his responsibilities. Sailing also gave Franklin a sense of connection to history and tradition. He admired the great explorers and naval leaders of the past, drawing inspiration from their courage and determination. For Franklin, sailing was a link to these figures, a way to experience, in a small measure, the challenges and triumphs they faced. The sea was also a teacher for Franklin. It taught him about patience, resilience, and the importance of being prepared for the unexpected. These lessons were valuable in his political life as well. The skills he honed while sailing, navigation, quick decision-making and dealing with changing conditions were directly applicable to the world of politics. Franklin's experiences on the sea also influenced his views on environmental conservation. He developed a deep appreciation for the beauty and fragility of nature. This appreciation would later translate into his efforts to preserve natural spaces and promote conservation as part of his political agenda. During his time as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Franklin's connection to the sea took on a new dimension. He was now responsible for the welfare of the United States Navy, a role that combined his passion for the sea with his duty to his country. 
This position allowed him to use his knowledge and love for maritime affairs to contribute to the nation's security. Despite the demands of his career, Franklin always found time to return to the sea. These moments were essential for his well-being. The sea was a constant in his life, a source of joy and renewal amidst the ever-changing world of politics. In the later years, after his polio diagnosis, sailing became even more significant for Franklin. It was one of the few activities where he felt free from the limitations of his illness. On the water, he was not the man with polio. He was a sailor, free and in command. The sea provided him with a sense of normalcy and control, which was invaluable in coping with his condition. The call of the sea was a fundamental part of Franklin Delano Roosevelt's life. It shaped his character, provided solace, and influenced his perspective on leadership and responsibility. In the tumultuous waters of politics, the lessons learned from sailing, resilience, adaptability, and the importance of staying true to one's course guided Franklin throughout his career. As he navigated the challenges of leadership, Franklin often reflected on his time at sea. The peace and clarity he found on the water were sources of strength and inspiration. The sea was more than a hobby for Franklin. It was a companion on his journey, a reminder of the joys and simplicities of life amidst the complexities of the world. Franklin's love for sailing was not just a part of who he was. It was integral to the leader he became. Chapter 5. Assistant Secretary of the Navy In 1913, Franklin Delano Roosevelt stepped into a role that would mark a significant chapter in his life and career, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. This position was a merging of his deep-rooted love for the sea and his unwavering commitment to public service. It was a time of growth and challenge, as Franklin navigated the complexities of this vital role during the turbulent times of World War I. As Assistant Secretary, Franklin was entrusted with a range of responsibilities that tested his leadership and strategic skills. He was involved in the administration of naval affairs, overseeing the construction and maintenance of ships, and managing the personnel of the Navy. His passion for the sea and his keen understanding of naval matters were assets that he brought to this position. Franklin's tenure was during a period of significant change and advancement in naval technology and strategy. He was a strong advocate for modernizing the Navy, understanding the importance of being prepared in an increasingly volatile world. Under his watch, the Navy saw the expansion of its fleet, including the addition of more modern ships and submarines. This expansion was critical in ensuring that the United States Navy remained a formidable force. One of the greatest challenges Franklin faced during his time as Assistant Secretary was the outbreak of World War I in 1914. Though the United States initially remained neutral, the war had far-reaching impacts and the Navy had to be prepared for any eventuality. Franklin played a crucial role in this preparation working tirelessly to ensure the Navy was ready if and when the United States entered the conflict. Franklin's approach to leadership was proactive and hands-on. He believed in being thoroughly involved in the workings of the Navy, often visiting shipyards, naval bases, and engaging directly with sailors and officers. This hands-on approach not only gave him a better understanding of the Navy's operations, but also earned him the respect and loyalty of those who served under him. His commitment to the welfare of the Navy's personnel was evident. Franklin pushed for better living conditions for sailors, advocating for improved health care and training. He understood that the strength of the Navy lay not just in its ships and technology, but in the men who served. The entry of the United States into World War I in 1917 brought new challenges and responsibilities for Franklin. 
He was involved in the mobilization of the Navy for war, a massive and complex undertaking. Franklin's leadership during this period was marked by his ability to make tough decisions quickly and efficiently, always keeping the best interests of the nation and the Navy in mind. One of Franklin's significant contributions during the war was his involvement in establishing the Navy's role in convoy operations. This strategy was crucial in protecting merchant ships against enemy submarines and ensuring the safe passage of troops and supplies. His strategic thinking and understanding of naval warfare were instrumental in the success of these operations. Throughout his tenure, Franklin faced opposition and criticism, as is often the case in positions of power. However, he handled these challenges with poise and determination, never losing sight of his goals and responsibilities. Eleanor Roosevelt, his wife, was a constant source of support during this time. She was his confidant and advisor, providing him with perspective and counsel. The partnership between Franklin and Eleanor was a cornerstone of his success, both personally and professionally. Franklin's time as Assistant Secretary of the Navy was not just a job, it was a mission. He approached every task with a sense of duty and a commitment to excellence. The experiences and challenges he faced during this time were pivotal in shaping his leadership style and his understanding of international affairs. As the war came to an end in 1918, Franklin reflected on his tenure with a sense of accomplishment and learning. He had navigated the Navy through one of the most challenging periods in its history, leaving a lasting impact on its operations and strategies. The lessons learned and the experiences gained during this time were invaluable, laying the groundwork for his future endeavours in public service. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's tenure as Assistant Secretary of the Navy was a testament to his leadership, vision and dedication to his country. It was a chapter in his life that not only tested his abilities, but also reinforced his commitment to serving the nation. The skills, knowledge and insights he gained during this period would be crucial in the years to come, as he rose to become one of the most influential leaders of the 20th century. Franklin's journey in the Navy Department was a crucial stepping stone in his path to greatness, shaping the leader he was destined to become. Chapter 6 Polio Strikes In the summer of 1921, a dramatic and life-altering event occurred in the life of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. While vacationing with his family at their summer home on Campobello Island, Franklin, then 39 years old, was struck by an illness that would change the course of his life forever. The diagnosis was polio, a disease that primarily affects children and can lead to severe paralysis. Franklin's illness began subtly, with what seemed like a common cold. However, it quickly escalated, and within days he found himself unable to stand or walk. The realisation that he had contracted polio, a disease with no known cure at the time, was a profound shock to Franklin, his family and those close to him. For a man who was so active and full of life, the sudden paralysis was a devastating blow. Franklin was a person who thrived on engagement and action, whether in politics or in his personal pursuits like sailing. The idea of being confined and dependent on others was something he found difficult to accept. The impact of Franklin's illness was profound, not just on him, but also on his family. Eleanor, his wife, was faced with the challenge of supporting her husband through his illness while managing their household and caring for their children. She emerged as a pillar of strength providing emotional and physical support to Franklin during this challenging time. Franklin's children, too, had to come to terms with their father's condition. 
the vibrant and active father they knew was suddenly transformed into someone who needed constant care and assistance. Yet the family rallied around Franklin, their love and support becoming a source of strength and motivation for him. The early days of his illness were filled with uncertainty and despair. Franklin went through various treatments, hoping to find a cure or at least some improvement. He tried everything from hydrotherapy to innovative exercises, but progress was slow and often frustrating. Despite the challenges, Franklin's fighting spirit and determination were evident. He refused to let his illness define him or limit his aspirations. His political career, which had been on an upward trajectory, faced an uncertain future. But Franklin was not ready to give up on his dreams. The struggle with polio also brought a new perspective to Franklin's life and work. He developed a deeper understanding and empathy for those facing physical and economic challenges. This experience would later influence his approach to social policies and his commitment to helping the underprivileged and disabled. During his rehabilitation, Franklin discovered the therapeutic benefits of warm water at a resort in Warm Springs, Georgia. The buoyancy of the water gave him a sense of freedom and mobility that was difficult to achieve on land. Warm Springs became a haven for Franklin, a place where he could work on his recovery away from the public eye. The battle with polio was not just a physical challenge for Franklin, it was also a mental and emotional test. He had to come to terms with the limitations imposed by his illness, find new ways to do things, and reinvent himself in many ways. But Franklin's resilience and optimism shone through. He remained engaged in his interests and continued to be involved in political discussions and planning, refusing to let polio sideline him from public life. Eleanor played a critical role during this period not just as a caregiver, but also as a partner in Franklin's political endeavours. She became his eyes and ears, keeping him informed about political developments and public opinions. Her role in his life and career became even more significant, as she often represented him at events and meetings. The experience with polio also brought Franklin closer to the American people. As he battled his illness, his struggle resonated with many who faced their own challenges. Franklin's courage and determination in the face of adversity became a source of inspiration for others. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's encounter with polio was a turning point in his life. It was a time of trial and transformation. The disease tested his physical and emotional limits, but also revealed the depth of his character. His battle with polio showed his resilience, his capacity to adapt, and his unwavering commitment to public service. The journey through this difficult period was not just about overcoming a physical ailment. It was about redefining himself and finding new ways to pursue his goals and dreams. Franklin's experience with polio shaped him in profound ways influencing his policies and approach to leadership. It made him more empathetic and understanding of the struggles of others, qualities that would define his presidency. Franklin's battle with polio was a testament to his strength and perseverance. It demonstrated that even in the face of the most daunting challenges, he had the courage and determination to move forward. His journey through illness and recovery was a powerful reminder of the human capacity to overcome adversity and emerge stronger. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's struggle with polio was not the end of his story. It was a new beginning, a chapter that would lead him to become one of the most influential leaders of the 20th century. Chapter 7. The Road to Recovery the road to recovery for Franklin Delano Roosevelt, after his polio diagnosis, was a journey marked by resilience, determination, and a relentless pursuit of improvement. Despite the limitations imposed by his illness, 
Franklin refused to surrender to despair. Instead, he embarked on a rigorous physical rehabilitation program, fueled by a deep-seated belief in his ability to overcome the challenges he faced. Franklin's journey began at Warm Springs, Georgia, where he found solace and hope in the therapeutic waters of the springs. The buoyancy of the water gave him a semblance of mobility, a freedom he longed for since his illness. It was at Warm Springs that Franklin started to reimagine his life, finding new ways to adapt to his physical limitations. His daily routine at Warm Springs was rigorous and disciplined. Franklin engaged in various exercises, both in and out of the water. He worked tirelessly to strengthen his muscles, spending hours each day in physical therapy. The exercises were often exhausting and painful, but Franklin's determination never wavered. He was driven by an unwavering commitment to regain as much mobility as possible. Franklin's resilience during his rehabilitation was not just a testament to his physical strength, but also to his mental fortitude. He faced each day with a positive attitude, believing that every small step forward was a victory. His optimism was infectious, inspiring others at Warm Springs, who were also battling physical challenges. The support of his family played a crucial role in Franklin's journey. Eleanor, his wife, was a constant presence, providing emotional support and encouragement. She believed in him unwaveringly, her faith in his recovery never faltering. Franklin's children, too, were a source of joy and motivation, reminding him of the joys of life beyond his illness. Throughout his rehabilitation, Franklin remained actively involved in political affairs, refusing to let his physical condition hinder his career. He used his time at Warm Springs not only for physical recovery, but also to stay connected with his political network. He held meetings, corresponded with colleagues, and kept abreast of national and international developments. Franklin's experience at Warm Springs also deepened his empathy for others with disabilities. He became acutely aware of the challenges faced by those with physical impairments and the lack of adequate facilities and support for them. This awareness would later influence his policies as a leader, driving him to advocate for the rights and welfare of the disabled. Despite his diligent efforts, Franklin's recovery was slow, and he never regained full use of his legs. However, he learned to adapt, using braces and crutches to aid his mobility. He developed techniques to appear as if he was walking, aided by the support of a companion or a sturdy object. This ability to adapt and find solutions was a hallmark of Franklin's approach to life and leadership. Franklin's time at Warm Springs also led to a significant development in his life. Recognising the therapeutic value of the springs, he established the Warm Springs Foundation in 1927, a facility dedicated to the treatment of polio patients. This foundation was a manifestation of Franklin's desire to help others facing similar challenges, providing them with care and a supportive community. The road to recovery for Franklin was more than a physical journey. It was a period of personal growth and transformation. He emerged from this experience with a renewed sense of purpose and a deeper understanding of the struggles faced by individuals with disabilities. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's journey towards physical rehabilitation was a testament to his character. His resilience in the face of adversity his determination to overcome challenges and his ability to adapt to new realities shaped not only his personal life, but also his approach to leadership. This period in his life was instrumental in preparing him for the challenges of leading a nation through some of its darkest times. The lessons Franklin learned on the road to recovery, perseverance, empathy and adaptability became integral to his presidency. His experience with polio not only strengthened him physically and mentally, but also deepened his commitment to serving others. 
The road to recovery was a defining chapter in Franklin's life, shaping the leader he would become and leaving an indelible mark on his legacy. Chapter 8. Governor of New York. In 1928, Franklin Delano Roosevelt reached a pivotal moment in his political career, a moment that would define his trajectory as a leader. He was elected governor of New York, a significant accomplishment that marked his return to the political forefront after his battle with polio. This chapter in Franklin's life was not just about his rise to power. It was about his commitment to bringing about change and improving the lives of the people. Franklin's campaign for governor was a testament to his resilience and determination. Despite his physical limitations, he travelled across New York, connecting with people from all walks of life. His message was one of hope and reform, resonating with many who were struggling with economic hardship and social injustices. As governor of New York, Franklin faced numerous challenges. The state was grappling with the effects of the Great Depression, which had left a profound impact on the economy and the lives of its citizens. Unemployment was high, businesses were failing, and many New Yorkers were living in poverty. Franklin understood that bold action was needed to address these issues. One of Franklin's first initiatives as governor was to tackle the economic crisis. He implemented a series of reform policies aimed at providing relief to those affected by the Depression. These policies included unemployment insurance, old age pensions and improved welfare services. Franklin's approach was innovative and progressive, focusing on social welfare and economic recovery. Another key area of focus for Franklin was the improvement of public services and infrastructure. He championed the development of hydroelectric power, believing that it was essential for economic growth and energy independence. This led to the expansion of the state's power generation capacity, providing affordable electricity to thousands of homes and businesses. Franklin's leadership style was marked by his ability to communicate effectively and connect with people. He used radio broadcasts, known as fireside chats, to speak directly to the citizens of New York. These chats were informal and conversational, allowing Franklin to explain his policies and reassure the public during uncertain times. His warm and engaging manner helped build trust and confidence among the people. Education was another area where Franklin made significant contributions. He believed in the power of education to transform lives and communities. Under his governorship, funding for public schools was increased and efforts were made to improve the quality of education across the state. Franklin's tenure as governor also saw advancements in labour rights and protections. He supported laws that regulated working hours, minimum wage and workplace safety. These reforms were crucial in improving the working conditions and livelihoods of millions of New Yorkers. Despite facing opposition from some quarters, Franklin's popularity continued to grow. His policies and reforms were making a real difference in the lives of the people, and his pragmatic approach to governance was widely admired. He was seen as a leader who cared about the welfare of all citizens, not just the wealthy or the powerful. Franklin's success as governor of New York was not just due to his policies, but also to his ability to inspire hope in difficult times. He showed that government could be a force for good, a tool for improving society and helping those in need. His time as governor also prepared Franklin for the greater challenges he would face as President of the United States. The experiences he gained, the lessons he learned, and the relationships he built during this period were invaluable. He had proven his leadership capabilities and his commitment to public service, earning the respect and admiration of people across the state and the nation. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's tenure as governor of New York was a period of transformation and progress. 
It was a time when his vision for a better society began to take shape, laying the groundwork for his future presidency. His leadership during this time was a beacon of hope for many, a sign that change was possible and that better days were ahead. Franklin's journey as governor was an essential chapter in his life, a chapter that showcased his ability to lead with compassion, vision and determination. Chapter 9. The Great Depression The late 1920s and early 1930s were a period of unprecedented economic hardship in the United States, known as the Great Depression. It was a time that tested the resilience of the nation and its people, and it was during this challenging period that Franklin Delano Roosevelt prepared to assume the highest office in the land. The Great Depression not only set the stage for his presidency, but also profoundly shaped his political views and policies. The country was in turmoil when Franklin was elected president in 1932. The stock market crash of 1929 had sent shockwaves through the economy, leading to massive unemployment, widespread poverty and a severe banking crisis. Businesses were closing, farms were failing and millions of Americans were struggling to make ends meet. The nation was in desperate need of leadership and hope. Franklin approached the crisis with a sense of urgency and a determination to bring about significant change. He understood that the traditional approaches to government and economics were inadequate to address the scale of the crisis. His experience as governor of New York had prepared him for this moment, giving him valuable insights into managing large-scale public programs and responding to economic challenges. One of Franklin's first actions as president was to address the banking crisis. He declared a bank holiday, temporarily closing all banks to halt the panic and restore confidence in the financial system. This bold move was followed by the passage of the Emergency Banking Act, which provided support to struggling banks and stabilised the banking system. The cornerstone of Franklin's response to the Great Depression was the New Deal, a series of programmes, public work projects, financial reforms and regulations. The New Deal was revolutionary in its approach, aiming to provide immediate economic relief, support recovery and reform the financial system to prevent a future crisis. Franklin's New Deal included initiatives like the Civilian Conservation Corps, CCC, which provided employment in environmental projects, and the Works Progress Administration, WPA, which created jobs in public works projects. These programmes not only helped reduce unemployment, but also improved the nation's infrastructure and supported the conservation of natural resources. The Agricultural Adjustment Act, AAA was another key part of the New Deal, aimed at supporting farmers and stabilising agricultural prices. This legislation helped revive the rural economy and provided much needed relief to struggling farmers. Franklin's leadership during the Great Depression was characterised by his willingness to experiment and take risks. He understood that some of his policies might not work as intended, but he believed that taking action was better than inaction. His approach was pragmatic, focused on what could bring the most immediate and effective relief to the suffering American people. Throughout his presidency, Franklin faced opposition and criticism from various quarters. Some accused him of overreaching and undermining the free market, while others argued that his policies did not go far enough. However, Franklin remained steadfast in his belief that the government had a critical role to play in safeguarding the welfare of its citizens and ensuring economic stability. Franklin's ability to communicate with the American people was a key factor in his success. His fireside chats, radio broadcasts in which he spoke directly to the nation, were instrumental in building public support for his policies. These chats were intimate and reassuring, making complex economic issues understandable and presenting his vision for the nation's recovery. 
The impact of the Great Depression and Franklin's response to it reshaped American society and government. The New Deal programs not only provided immediate relief, but also laid the foundation for long-term social and economic reforms. These reforms included social security, which provided financial security for the elderly and unemployed, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, which regulated the stock market. Franklin's experience during the Great Depression profoundly influenced his political philosophy. He emerged as a champion of the common man, committed to creating a society where everyone had an opportunity to succeed. His policies reflected a belief in the power of government to bring about positive change and a commitment to social justice and economic equality. The Great Depression was a defining moment in American history and Franklin Delano Roosevelt's leadership during this time was crucial in guiding the nation through its darkest hours. His response to the crisis demonstrated his ability to empathize with the suffering of the people to innovate in the face of adversity and to remain resolute in his pursuit of a better future for all Americans. The challenges of the Great Depression set the stage for Franklin's presidency, shaping him into a leader whose policies and actions would leave an indelible mark on the nation and the world. Franklin's tenure as president during this tumultuous time was a testament to his vision, courage, and unwavering commitment to serving the American people. Chapter 10 A New Deal for America In 1933, with the United States mired in the depths of the Great Depression, Franklin Delano Roosevelt embarked on an ambitious journey to transform the country's economic landscape. His presidency began with a promise of a new deal for the American people. A series of bold and innovative policies aimed at reviving the struggling economy and providing relief to those suffering from the effects of the Depression. The New Deal was more than a set of economic measures. It was a beacon of hope for millions of Americans who had lost their jobs, their savings and their faith in the future. Franklin approached the task with a sense of urgency and a willingness to experiment. He believed that the federal government had a critical role to play in providing relief, fostering recovery, and reforming the economic system. One of the first steps under the New Deal was the establishment of the Emergency Banking Act, which helped stabilize the banking system and restore public confidence in financial institutions. This was followed by the creation of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC which protected bank deposits and prevented the kind of bank runs that had exacerbated the financial crisis. Understanding the urgent need for employment, Franklin launched several public works programs designed to create jobs and improve the nation's infrastructure. The Civilian Conservation Corps, CCCC, and the Works Progress Administration, a WPA, were among the most significant of these programs. The CCC provided jobs in environmental conservation, while the WPA employed millions in building schools, hospitals, roads and other public facilities. These programs not only alleviated unemployment but also left a lasting legacy in the form of improved infrastructure and public amenities. The Agricultural Adjustment Act, AAA, was another cornerstone of the New Deal aimed at supporting the agricultural sector, which had been severely hit by the Depression. The AAAA worked to stabilize crop prices and provide financial assistance to farmers, helping to revive the rural economy. Franklin also focused on reforming the financial sector to prevent future economic crises. The Glass-Steagall Act was passed, which separated commercial and investment banking reducing the risk of speculative banking practices. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, was established to regulate the stock market, ensuring greater transparency and fairness. The New Deal included reforms in the labour sector as well. The National Labour Relations Act, 
also known as the Wagner Act, guaranteed workers the right to unionize and bargain collectively. This legislation marked a significant shift in labor relations, empowering workers and reducing the exploitation that was rampant in many industries. Social welfare was another area of focus. The Social Security Act, enacted in 1935, created a system of old age pensions and unemployment insurance, providing a safety net for the elderly and the jobless. This was a groundbreaking step in ensuring a basic standard of living for all Americans, regardless of their economic circumstances. Throughout his implementation of the New Deal, Franklin faced significant challenges. There was opposition from business leaders, conservative politicians, and even the Supreme Court, which struck down some of his key initiatives. However, Franklin remained undeterred, convinced of the necessity of his policies for the nation's recovery. Franklin's leadership style during this period was characterized by his pragmatism and his ability to communicate his vision to the American people. Through his fireside chats, he explained complex policies in simple terms, building public support and trust in his administration. The impact of the New Deal was profound and far-reaching. It not only provided immediate relief to millions of Americans, but also laid the foundation for a more equitable and stable economic system. While not all of his policies were successful, and the economy took several years to fully recover, Franklin's New Deal fundamentally transformed the role of the federal government in American society. The New Deal era was a time of significant change and innovation. It was a period when the government took an active role in addressing the economic challenges facing the nation, breaking new ground in social welfare, labor rights, and economic regulation. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal for America was a bold response to a time of crisis, reflecting his commitment to bringing about positive change and his belief in the power of government to improve the lives of its citizens. Under his leadership, the New Deal helped steer the United States through one of its darkest times and laid the groundwork for the nation's future prosperity and stability. Franklin's vision and actions during this critical period in American history left an indelible mark on the country, shaping its economic and social policies for generations to come. Chapter 11. Overcoming Opposition. As President Franklin Delano Roosevelt embarked on his ambitious New Deal policies to combat the Great Depression, he faced significant opposition. This chapter of his presidency was marked by a series of political battles where his strategic and diplomatic skills were put to the test. Franklin's vision for America was transformative but not everyone shared his enthusiasm for change. One of the main sources of opposition came from the business community and wealthy Americans. Many industrialists and financiers were wary of Franklin's New Deal programs, viewing them as radical interventions in the economy that threatened their interests. They argued that his policies were undermining the principles of free market capitalism and fostering an over-reliant society on government support. Additionally, Franklin faced challenges from within the political sphere. Conservative Democrats and Republicans in Congress often opposed his legislation, arguing that it expanded the federal government's power too far and threatened individual liberties. They were concerned about the growing national debt and the sustainability of Franklin's extensive social programs. The Supreme Court also posed a significant hurdle to Franklin's New Deal agenda. Several of his key programs were declared unconstitutional by the court, which at the time was composed of conservative justices. This opposition from the highest court in the land was a major setback for Franklin, as it threatened to unravel many of his key reforms. In response to these challenges, Franklin demonstrated remarkable political acumen and resilience. He understood the importance of public opinion 
and used his exceptional communication skills to rally support for his policies. Through his fireside chats and public addresses, he spoke directly to the American people, explaining his actions and the reasons behind them. This direct engagement helped to bolster public support for his agenda and put pressure on his political opponents. Franklin also showed a willingness to compromise and adapt his policies when necessary. He understood that total victory was less important than progress and was willing to make concessions to ensure the passage of critical elements of the New Deal. This pragmatic approach helped to navigate the complex landscape of Washington politics and achieve many of his legislative goals. To counter the opposition from the Supreme Court, Franklin proposed the Judicial Procedures Reform Bill of 1937, often referred to as the Court Packing Plan. This controversial move aimed to add more justices to the Supreme Court, which Franklin hoped would make the court more favourable to his policies. While the plan was met with significant backlash and ultimately failed, it showed Franklin's willingness to take bold steps to overcome the barriers to his reforms. Despite the opposition, Franklin's policies had a significant and lasting impact on American society. The New Deal helped to reshape the nation's economic landscape, laying the foundation for modern social welfare programs and regulatory frameworks. His leadership during this time was a balancing act of advancing his vision while navigating the realities of political opposition. Franklin's ability to overcome opposition was not just a result of his political skills. It was also due to his deep belief in the righteousness of his cause. He was driven by a conviction that his policies were essential for the welfare of the American people and the future of the nation. This belief gave him the strength and determination to persevere in the face of adversity. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's presidency, particularly during the implementation of the New Deal, was a time of significant change and challenge. The opposition he faced was formidable, but his strategic and diplomatic skills, coupled with his unwavering commitment to his principles, allowed him to navigate these challenges effectively. His ability to overcome opposition and implement his vision for America was a testament to his leadership and foresight. It was this resilience and determination that helped to steer the United States through one of its most difficult periods and left a lasting legacy on the nation's political and economic landscape. Franklin's journey through the turbulent waters of political opposition was a crucial part of his presidency, shaping not only his time in office, but also the future of the American nation. Chapter 12. A Gathering Storm. As the 1930s progressed, a shadow began to fall over the world, a shadow that signalled the approach of a conflict more devastating than any before. This was the era of a gathering storm, the period leading up to World War II. In the United States, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt watched with growing concern as the international tensions escalated. He understood that while America was focused on recovering from the Great Depression, it could not remain isolated from the turmoil unfolding across the oceans. The rise of totalitarian regimes in Europe and Asia was alarming. In Germany, Adolf Hitler's Nazi party was gaining power promoting a dangerous ideology of hatred and aggression. Meanwhile, in Italy, Benito Mussolini's fascist regime was also on the rise, and in the Far East, Japan was expanding its empire with a militaristic fervour. The world was inching closer to a global conflict, and the signs were unmistakable. Franklin recognised the threat these developments posed, not just to Europe and Asia, but to the entire world, including the United States. However, he faced a significant challenge in preparing the nation for the possibility of involvement in another global conflict. The memory of World War I and the losses it entailed were still fresh in the minds of many Americans, 
leading to a strong sentiment of isolationism in the country. Many Americans were opposed to any form of involvement in foreign wars, believing that the nation should focus on its own recovery and stay out of international conflicts. Despite the public sentiment, Franklin believed it was crucial for the United States to be prepared. He began to lay the groundwork for strengthening the nation's military capabilities. His administration worked on building a more robust and modern armed forces, understanding that if war came, America needed to be ready to defend itself and its allies. Franklin also understood the importance of supporting the nations that were standing against the tide of fascism. He sought ways to aid countries like Britain and France, which were directly threatened by the aggressive expansion of Nazi Germany. This led to the implementation of the Lend-Lease Act in 1941, a program that allowed the United States to send military aid to any country whose defence was deemed vital to American security. This act was a crucial step in providing support to the Allies without directly involving the United States in the war. At the same time, Franklin used his exceptional communication skills to slowly shift public opinion. Through his fireside chats and public addresses, he began to educate the American people about the dangers posed by the Axis powers and the importance of supporting democracies around the world. He carefully balanced his messages, understanding the delicate nature of American sentiments towards foreign involvement. Franklin's diplomatic efforts during this period were also critical. He worked to strengthen ties with other nations, building a coalition of allies and sending a clear message that the United States was not indifferent to the threats posed by fascist regimes. He navigated the complex international landscape with skill, maintaining a stance of neutrality while preparing the nation for the possibility of war. The period leading up to World War II was a time of strategic preparation and diplomatic manoeuvring. Franklin faced the daunting task of readying a nation still recovering from economic depression for a conflict that would test its strength and resolve like never before. His foresight in strengthening the military, supporting the Allies and gradually shifting public opinion was a testament to his leadership and understanding of international affairs. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's role during the gathering storm was crucial. He led the nation with a steady hand, preparing it for the challenges ahead, while striving to maintain peace for as long as possible. His actions during this period laid the foundation for America's eventual role in World War II, a role that would prove to be decisive in the fight against fascism. The gathering storm was a time of tension and uncertainty, but under Franklin's leadership, the United States emerged as a prepared and resilient nation, ready to face the challenges of the impending global conflict. Franklin's foresight and preparations during this critical time were key to ensuring that when the storm finally broke, America was ready to meet it. Chapter 13. America Joins the War. December 7th, 1941, a date which would live in infamy, marked a turning point in history and in the presidency of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese military jolted the United States from its stance of neutrality and thrust it into the throes of World War II. This momentous event called for leadership of the highest order, and Franklin was at the helm, ready to guide his nation through one of its darkest and most challenging times. The attack on Pearl Harbor was a shock to the American public and the world. In a matter of hours, the United States Navy suffered a devastating blow, with numerous ships destroyed and thousands of lives lost. The Nation reeled from the surprise and brutality of the attack. It was a moment of profound tragedy and a stark realization of the global threat post by the Axis powers. Franklin's response to this crisis was swift and decisive. On December 8, 1941, the day following the attack, he addressed a joint session of Congress, 
delivering one of the most iconic speeches in American history. He declared December 7th a date which will live in infamy and called for a declaration of war against Japan. His words resonated with the American people, uniting them in a common cause. The nation, which had been divided over the issue of involvement in the war, came together with a newfound determination and resolve. Franklin's leadership during this critical period was marked by his ability to rally the nation and organize a massive war effort. He understood that the United States had to mobilize quickly and efficiently to meet the challenges of a global conflict. Under his direction, the country underwent a remarkable transformation. Factories were converted to produce war materials, a draft was initiated to build the armed forces, and the entire economy was geared towards supporting the war effort. Franklin also played a crucial role in building and maintaining the alliances that were essential for the success of the war. He worked closely with leaders such as Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of Britain, and Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, to develop a unified strategy against the Axis powers. These alliances, although sometimes fraught with tension, were critical in coordinating military efforts and ensuring a cohesive response to the enemy. Throughout the war, Franklin faced numerous challenges and difficult decisions. The war effort required significant resources and manpower, and the toll on American soldiers and their families was heavy. Franklin had to navigate complex military and political landscapes, making strategic decisions that would affect not just the outcome of the war, but the future of the global order. One of Franklin's key strengths during this time was his ability to communicate with the American people. Through his fireside chats and public addresses, he kept the nation informed about the progress of the war and the challenges ahead. He spoke with honesty and empathy, acknowledging the sacrifices being made by American families while instilling a sense of confidence and hope in the ultimate victory. Under Franklin's leadership, the United States played a pivotal role in the war. American troops fought bravely in multiple theatres, from the beaches of Normandy to the islands of the Pacific. The production and supply efforts on the home front were equally vital, providing the necessary resources and equipment to sustain the Allied forces. The entry of the United States into World War II under Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a defining moment in the 20th century. It marked the emergence of the United States as a global superpower and set the stage for its role in shaping the post-war world. Franklin's leadership during this time was characterized by his strategic vision, his ability to unite and mobilize the nation, and his unwavering commitment to the cause of freedom and democracy. The war years were a time of immense challenge and change. The nation faced unprecedented demands, and the cost in human lives and resources was immense. Yet, under Franklin's guidance, the United States rose to the challenge, playing a crucial role in the defeat of the Axis powers and the restoration of peace. His leadership during this period was not just a testament to his skills as a commander-in-chief, but also to his qualities as a leader who could inspire and bring out the best in his people. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's presidency during America's entry into World War II was a period of extraordinary challenge, but also of great triumph, as he led his nation through the perils of war to emerge victorious on the other side. Chapter 14 The Four-Term President In the annals of American history, Franklin Delano Roosevelt stands unique as the only president to be elected to four terms in office. His election to a fourth term in 1944 was a testament to his enduring popularity and the deep trust the American people placed in his leadership. This chapter of his life and presidency is not just a record of political success. It symbolizes the extraordinary times and the extraordinary measures that defined his era. 
By 1944, the United States was deeply engaged in World War II. The challenges were immense, and the outcome, while hopeful, was yet uncertain. The American people, having endured the hardships of the Great Depression, and now united in the war effort, sought continuity and stability in leadership. Franklin, with his proven track record and reassuring presence, was the natural choice for many. His decision to run for a fourth term was not made lightly. Franklin was acutely aware of the traditions that had shaped American democracy, including the two-term precedent set by George Washington. However, the extraordinary circumstances of a world at war and the critical stage of the Allied efforts demanded experienced leadership. Franklin felt a deep sense of duty to continue serving his country in these pivotal times. The 1944 election campaign was conducted against the backdrop of war. Franklin's focus was not solely on political victory, but on ensuring the nation remained united and focused on the war effort. His campaign was less about the fanfare of electioneering and more about a solemn promise to see the nation through the crisis. Despite his declining health, Franklin remained actively engaged in the campaign, addressing the nation and articulating his vision for a post-war America. He spoke of a future where freedom, peace and security would be the cornerstones of the nation and the world. His message resonated with a public that had grown weary of war, but was resolved to see it through to a victorious end. Franklin's opponent in the election, Thomas E. Dewey, a young and energetic Republican, presented a formidable challenge. Dewey criticised Franklin's New Deal policies and argued for a change in leadership. However, the American people, by and large, were not ready to switch horses midstream. They had developed a deep bond with Franklin, seeing him as a steady hand guiding the nation through some of its darkest hours. The election results were a clear mandate. Franklin won with a comfortable majority, securing 432 electoral votes to Dewey's 99. This victory was not just a personal triumph for Franklin. It was an affirmation of the policies and leadership he had provided since the beginning of his presidency. Franklin's fourth term, however, would be short-lived. His health, which had been deteriorating, finally gave way. On April 12, 1945, just months into his fourth term, Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed away. His death was a profound shock to the nation and the world. He had been a constant presence in the lives of Americans for over a decade, leading them through some of the most challenging periods in modern history. Franklin's unprecedented election to a fourth term and his enduring popularity are reflective of the extraordinary impact he had on the United States and the world. He had steered the nation through economic collapse and global conflict, implementing profound changes that reshaped American society and government. His leadership style, marked by empathy, resolve and an ability to connect with ordinary people, engendered a level of trust that few leaders have ever achieved. The legacy of Franklin Delano Roosevelt is not just in the policies he implemented or the victories achieved under his leadership. His legacy lies in the hope he instilled in the American people, the confidence he had in their resilience and the vision he held for a just and peaceful world. As a four-term president, Franklin left an indelible mark on American history, a legacy of leadership that continues to inspire and guide future generations. His presidency, particularly his fourth term, symbolizes the trust of a nation in a leader who guided them with wisdom, courage, and an unwavering commitment to the principles of democracy and freedom. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's journey as the four-term president is a story of triumph in the face of adversity of leadership that transcended the ordinary and shaped the course of history. Chapter 15. The Final Battles. As World War II raged on, the latter years of the conflict would test the leadership of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt like never before. 
The final battles of the war were marked by strategic decisions, relentless determination, and a path towards victory that had been hard fought and dearly earned. By the time 1945 arrived, the war had been raging for six long years. The Allied forces, which included the United States, Britain, the Soviet Union and others, had made significant progress in pushing back the Axis powers, Nazi Germany, Italy and Japan. However, the challenges that lay ahead were monumental. Franklin understood the gravity of the situation and the importance of coordinating the efforts of the Allied forces. He played a crucial role in the strategic decisions that would shape the final battles of the war. One of the most significant decisions was the timing and location of the Allied invasion of Nazi-occupied Western Europe. This massive undertaking, codenamed Operation Overlord, was aimed at liberating Western Europe from the grip of Nazi tyranny. The invasion, which took place on June 6, 1944, was a massive logistical feat, involving hundreds of thousands of troops, ships and aircraft. Franklin's role in planning and supporting this operation was pivotal. He understood that the success of Operation Overlord would be a turning point in the war. The D-Day landings on the beaches of Normandy marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. Despite the fierce resistance from German forces, the Allied troops managed to establish a beachhead and push inland. Franklin closely monitored the progress of the invasion, providing support and encouragement to the troops in the field. Another critical decision made during this time was the strategy for defeating Japan in the Pacific. Franklin was determined to bring the war against Japan to a swift and successful conclusion. The development and use of the atomic bomb under the Manhattan Project was a closely guarded secret that would change the course of history. On August 6, 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, followed by another on Nagasaki on August 9th. These devastating attacks forced Japan to surrender, bringing an end to World War II in the Pacific. Franklin's decision to use the atomic bomb was a controversial one, but he believed it would hasten the end of the war and save countless lives that would have been lost in a prolonged conflict. Franklin's leadership during the final battles of World War II was marked by the immense burden of decision-making. He grappled with the moral and strategic implications of the choices he faced. He understood that the fate of the world hung in the balance, and the decisions he made would have far-reaching consequences. The final battles of World War II were not just about military strategy, they were also about the pursuit of lasting peace. Franklin worked closely with Allied leaders, including Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin, to plan for the post-war world. The United Nations, an international organization aimed at promoting peace and cooperation among nations, was established during this time with Franklin's strong support. The war in Europe officially ended on May 8, 1945, when Nazi Germany surrendered. The war in the Pacific ended with Japan's surrender on September 2, 1945, after the atomic bombings. The world had been forever changed by the conflict, and Franklin had played a central role in the Allied victory. In the midst of these monumental events, Franklin's health had deteriorated significantly. The strain of leading the nation through a world war had taken a toll on his body. On April 12, 1945, just weeks before the victory in Europe, Franklin Delano Roosevelt passed away. His death was a profound loss, coming so close to the end of the war. The final battles of World War II were a testament to Franklin's leadership determination and the weight of the decisions he had to make. He had guided the nation through its darkest hours, leading it to victory against formidable foes. 
His vision for a post-war world, marked by cooperation and peace, set the stage for the United States' role as a global leader in the years to come. Franklin's legacy during this period is not just one of military victory, but also of a commitment to the principles of democracy and a vision for a better world, where nations could come together to prevent future conflicts. The final battles of World War II were a crucible that tested both the leadership of Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the resolve of the American people, and together they emerged victorious. Chapter 16 A Lasting Legacy The passing of Franklin Delano Roosevelt on April 12, 1945, marked the end of an era, but it also signalled the beginning of a legacy that would endure for generations. As the nation mourned the loss of its leader, it reflected on the impact of his leadership on American history and the lasting legacy he left behind. Franklin's journey as President of the United States had been nothing short of extraordinary. He had taken office during the depths of the Great Depression when the nation was mired in economic despair. Through his New Deal policies, he had brought hope and relief to millions of Americans. His ability to connect with ordinary people through his fireside chats and personal visits had earned him the nickname The People's President. The challenges he faced during his four terms in office were monumental. Leading the nation through the trials of World War II required not only strategic acumen, but also a deep understanding of the values and principles that defined America. Franklin's leadership during this period had been marked by his unwavering commitment to democracy, freedom, and the pursuit of a just and lasting peace. One of Franklin's enduring legacies was the transformation of the role of the federal government. His presidency had seen the expansion of government programs and agencies aimed at addressing the needs of the American people. Social Security, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and the Civilian Conservation Corps were just a few of the initiatives that reshaped American society and provided a safety net for those in need. His commitment to the welfare of the American people had left an indelible mark on the nation's social and economic landscape. Franklin's leadership had also played a pivotal role in shaping the international order in the aftermath of World War II. He had been a driving force behind the establishment of the United Nations, an organization dedicated to preventing future conflicts and promoting cooperation among nations. His vision for a world where diplomacy and dialogue could replace warfare and aggression laid the groundwork for a new era of international relations. The impact of Franklin's presidency extended beyond his policies and initiatives. He had set a standard for leadership characterized by empathy, resilience and a deep sense of duty. His ability to connect with people from all walks of life had made him a beloved figure in American history. His fireside chats, in which he spoke directly to the American people, had created a sense of unity and purpose during some of the nation's most challenging times. Franklin's passing had left a void in the hearts of Americans, but it had also ignited a determination to carry forward his vision and principles. His successor, Harry S. Truman, would continue the work of the Roosevelt administration, overseeing the end of World War II and the early years of the post-war era. Truman's presidency would be marked by the challenges of the Cold War and the rebuilding of war-torn nations, but he would draw inspiration from the legacy of his predecessor. In the years that followed, the United States would experience significant changes and challenges. The civil rights movement, the space race, and the struggle for equality would shape the nation's trajectory. Through it all, the principles of democracy and freedom championed by Franklin Delano Roosevelt would continue to guide the nation. Today, the legacy of Franklin Delano Roosevelt endures. 
His presidency remains a symbol of leadership during times of crisis and a testament to the resilience of the American spirit. His vision for a nation where every citizen had the opportunity to pursue happiness and prosperity continues to inspire generations of Americans. As we reflect on the life and legacy of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, we are reminded of the enduring impact of leadership that is grounded in empathy, principle, and a commitment to the greater good. His legacy serves as a reminder that, in the face of adversity, America has the capacity to rise, to unite, and to overcome. Franklin's journey as President of the United States was a remarkable one, and his legacy is a testament to the enduring values that define the nation he loved and served. As we conclude our story, remember that learning English through stories is a wonderful way to enhance your language skills. To access more enriching tales and download free ebooks in PDF format, visit wooenglish.com. Happy reading and learning.